This Battle Clip Pro Start Guide was made possible by Envato Elements. This video is a beginner's guide to start editing in Final Cut Pro in 2023. To create our first project, we're gonna go up to File, New, and select Library. In here, we'll go ahead and locate the folder that we wanna create our library in, and I'm just gonna call it First Video Library. Then I will go ahead and push save. Now that I've created a library, you're gonna see that it has automatically created an event. Now the difference between a library and event can seem a little bit confusing, and I'll be honest, you really don't have to think too hard about it. But what I like to imagine libraries as is as a filing cabinet. Each filing cabinet is actually able to contain multiple projects within, as well as all of your footage, all of your graphics, all your music. Now within that library, if you need further organization, you can use events. Sometimes I will have my A roll or my interview clips inside of one event while I have all of my B roll, my music, my footage in a different event. I'm gonna select my B roll footage. In here we'll select import media and we're just gonna go ahead and locate our desktop. We have our first video and I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. In here you'll see I have footage and audio so I'm gonna select both of those then I'm gonna go ahead and select import selected. So now Final Cut Pro has brought in all of the footage that I wanted to import as well as all of the different audio that I wanted to bring in. Now you'll notice inside of this B-roll folder, I can click this down arrow, and in here you'll see that I have audio and I have footage. And that is because I put all of my footage inside of separate folders within Finder. So each of these is what's known as a keyword collection, and Final Cut Pro will automatically create those keyword collections if you put them inside of folders inside of Finder. Now that we have all of our footage and audio in Final Cut Pro, I'm just gonna come to the bottom of the screen and find this new project button. Selecting that should bring up a dialogue window just like this. Now, if you don't have these extra options, you might just have the automatic settings set up. Go ahead and select use custom settings. So in here we can call it our first video project, then we can select 1080p HD. Under the resolution, we'll leave it at 1920 by 1080, and we can leave our frame rate at 2997 and push OK. Now that we've done that, you'll see that there is this large gray bar here at the bottom. That is what's known as the magnetic timeline, and it is by far one of the very best features that Final Cut Pro has. We'll get into that in just a little bit. What we'll see up here in the top left is all of our footage and all of our audio. Now, if you prefer to not see thumbnails and you just want a text version, you can actually select this icon and now everything will be laid out in a text format. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in the thumbnail view. What we're gonna do is find the portions of video that we want to import. So, I'm gonna start the video clip right here and to do that, I'm gonna push I. You'll notice that this golden bar has actually come to wherever my playhead was. Now, I'll just play forward until I find the end of the clip that I want and we will push O. Now this is not permanent by any means, but it is good to get in the habit of quickly making your selections before you bring it on the timeline to save you some extra steps. Now that we've done that, we can actually just click and drag this piece of footage down onto the timeline. Now you'll notice that if I were to take this piece of footage and drop it all the way over here on the right side, Final Cut Pro is going to automatically push it all the way to the left side, and that is the magnetic timeline at work. Now that I have my first piece of footage down here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in another piece of footage. So we'll push I and O to find the different portions of video that we want, and rather than clicking and dragging, I can actually use one of these different icons here, or you can do it with keyboard shortcuts. So if I were to select this first one, you'll see that it places the footage on top of this original clip that I had. So that can be achieved with Q. And that is known as connecting the clip to the storyline. The next option, if I were to take my playhead and place it here in the middle, and if I were to push W, what that does is it creates a cut, inserts your footage in the middle, and then continues the original clip on. And that is known as inserting your clip. If I were to push E, that would append the clip to the very end of the storyline. So this is the one that I probably use the most to quickly get footage down on the timeline. I'll just go in, find the clip that I want, and push E, 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 and just like that, I have three clips down on the timeline. You can also select multiple clips, click and drag, and place them all on the timeline at once. So one thing you might notice is that as I drag my playhead through the timeline, 
it's actually playing out the footage, and this is known as skimming in Final Cut Pro. You can disable this with S or by clicking on this icon right here. Also, there is audio skimming in Final Cut Pro, and you can disable that right here. So if you don't want to actually hear the audio as you're moving your playhead through, you can disable it really quickly. You can also achieve that with Shift S. Let's say that I want to actually move this clip up above everything. You'll notice that as I click and drag, the rest of the footage actually pushes over to the left hand side. So this is the magnetic timeline at work. And it can seem a little bit frustrating at the beginning, but I promise you, if you stick with the magnetic timeline, it is going to become the most powerful tool in your toolbox. It's going to vastly speed up your editing speed, and it's going to make editing such a joy because it comes at the speed of thought. So I've moved this clip up and you'll notice that as I click and drag this clip, there's actually this blue stem. That stem indicates that this clip is actually connected to the clip underneath. So if I were to move this clip, that clip would stay attached. And that is the beauty of the magnetic timeline. It makes it so you can very simply make really complex timelines and then completely move portions without worrying about anything getting out of sync. Now something you might find annoying, if I were to go ahead and delete this clip, it's going to also delete that above clip. So something you can do is actually move this connection point. What you can do is push command and option and then click where you want that new connection point to be made. So you'll notice now that the blue connection point is over here on the right side. Here it is again, now on the left side. Now what if you don't wanna bother with creating new connection points? What you can do is use the tilde key. You'll know the tilde key is activated by seeing this little orange icon next to your mouse and that's actually showing that the connections are overridden. What you're going to do is select your clip that you want to delete, push the tilde key and then delete it. And you'll notice that these two clips on top did not budge when I deleted it. Now if you don't have the tilde key, you can go up to Final Cut Pro, Commands and select Customize. When you first start at Final Cut Pro, it's going to have the default selected. Go ahead and select that and then go up to Duplicate. Now I'm just going to rename this to be Override Connections, but it's totally up to you what you want to call it. Now that we've done that, we can go to the far right side and then just look up Override Connections. And in here, you'll see the command Override Connections. Selecting that, go ahead and put in whatever key you want to reassign this to. Something like the H key could work, and then it's going to ask if you want to reassign it, go ahead and select reassign. And now you can override the connections in your timeline. Now, some really quick navigation tools in Final Cut Pro, you can zoom in and zoom out by pushing Command plus and Command minus. And if you're too far zoomed in, you can push Shift Z and that will zoom out to fit the entire timeline. This also works up here in the viewer. If you're zoomed in, you'll actually see this little red box here on the right side. And again, you can push Shift Z to zoom out to fit. So now that we have some clips down on the timeline, let's go ahead and refine some of our edits. If you need to trim off the beginning of a clip, you can actually click and drag on the edge and then drag that over. So you can shorten up a clip really, really easily that way. Also, if you wanna create a cut in the middle of a clip, you can push B and that will give you the blade tool, which looks like these scissors. So if I wanted to create a cut, I can just click anywhere on that clip and you'll see that it has created that dotted line. That dotted line indicates that this clip to this clip is a continuation. So that means that we can actually select that dotted line and push delete and now that edit will be completely gone. But you'll notice that on these other clips, it's a solid line. That means that it is not a continuation of one clip to another. So you cannot delete that edit. Now, one other thing that will be really helpful to know is you can edit in one frame increments. If you push the period key or the comma key, you can move over one frame. And if you push shift and period, that will move 10 frames. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to add in titles. To add a title, simply go to the top left and find this icon that has a T. In here, you'll see that there are titles and generators. Now to see the different categories of titles you might have, you can select this down arrow and that will show you all of the different plugins and titles that you have installed. What I'm gonna do is actually locate the basic title and I'm just gonna use the search feature to do that. And right here is the basic title. I'll just click and drag that down onto the timeline. Now that we've done that, we can select this title and you'll notice that I can actually click and drag directly on the title within my viewer. So you can just quickly drag your title to wherever you like. 
Now you can write whatever you want. I'll just write subscribe. And in these options here, we can actually change the font. So I like the Roboto font. I'll go ahead and do that. We can change the thickness, I'll set it to black. And we can also scale it up here. You can change your alignment, your line spacing, all of these different options that you might possibly need. Now, if you wanna change the color of your text, you're gonna to need to find the face option, select show, and now we can go ahead and change this to whatever color we like. Now, as it is right now, the subscribe text just pops on and I want it to have a nice fade. That is where transitions come into Final Cut Pro. We'll go over to the far right side and find the transitions option. Selecting that, you'll see that you have a lot of different transitions here. Mine is going to look different because I have plugins installed, but one that I know for sure you're gonna have is the cross dissolve. So selecting the cross dissolve, we can actually just click and drag that onto our clip. And just like that, you'll see that now our subscribe text actually has this nice fade to it. If we wanna increase the length of the cross dissolve, we can click on the edge here and just drag that out just like so. And now we have a nice slow fade. If we need to lengthen out our title, we can actually find this icon in the top left and we can click and drag that as long as we need. Now something you are going to be using all of the time in Final Cut Pro is effects. Now the most common effect you're going to use is likely color correction. But before I show you that, I'm gonna pay some bills and show you something really incredible from my friends over at Envato Elements. So if we go to the Envato Elements website, we can actually go up to video templates and look up Final Cut Pro. And in here, you are going to see that they have 3,543 different templates for Final Cut Pro. And the best part about Envato is that you can download an unlimited amount of these different presets. So it's kind of like having unlimited plugins for Final Cut Pro. But not only do they have all these different Final Cut Pro templates, they also have over 3 million different stock video shots. They have all of this different music, sound effects, graphic templates, graphics, presentation templates, photos, fonts, add-ons, web templates and so much more. So make sure you use the links down below to get an amazing deal on Envato Elements. So if I wanted to color correct a shot, I could select it, go on over here to the far right side and select this icon. This is going to show me all of the different effects I have installed. And again, mine is gonna look different from yours because I have different plugins installed. The default color correction effect is this color board. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag that onto the clip that I want to color correct. Now that I've done that, we can actually come up here to this colorful icon and select it. Now that we're in the color board, you're gonna notice several things. There are four different indicator dots. This one is the global control, so it affects everything. This one is the shadow control, so it affects the darkest parts of the image. This one is your mid-tones, and this will adjust your highlights. Now, you'll see this gray indicator line in the middle, and that indicates that whatever colors are down here are actually the complete opposite. So if you were to look at a color wheel, they would be on completely opposite sides of each other. So the reason why this is helpful is in a lot of color theory, you'll see that contrasting colors create a really pleasing image. So the most common one in Hollywood is to do a teal and orange look. Now some will say it's a little cliche, but it does do the trick. What they'll do is they'll take the shadows and drag those into the teal range. Then they'll take their mid-tones and drag those down into an orange range. Now I could take these mid-tones and drag them over into the oranges right here, or if I wanted to save some time, I'll just drag it to the complete opposite of where the shadows are lying. So this is going to create a naturally pleasing image because orange works really well with skin tones because we have a little bit of orange going on and then the shadows having that teal look make it so that your skin tones really pop from the background. So that is just a super basic look at the color board, but then you can also go into your saturation. If you want a more saturated image, you could drag this slider, which is your global control, and now everything will become more saturated. We could just add more saturation to the shadows, to the midtones, and the highlights. Also, you have your exposure. So here is your global control to make everything brighter, or you can just brighten your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So that is a super basic look at how to use the color wheels, but let's say you wanna apply this effect onto everything across the board. The easiest way to do that is to select your clip and you can push Command C or you can go up to Edit and go down to Copy. Then select your other clips. I'll just click and drag over all of them to select all three. We'll go up to Edit and this time we're going to select Paste Attributes, which you can also achieve 
leave with command shift V in here you can select everything that is copied over so if I move the clip around I could actually select the transform options if I added any cropping anything like that I could copy and paste over to other clips so for right now we just want this color board and I will select paste and so now all of these clips have that same color grade that I just created for the first epic mountain shot right here. Now something you should know is how to change effects parameters. So let's go ahead and just quickly look up an effect, something like bad TV. I can click and drag that on and now I have a bad TV look. If I wanted to adjust parameters on this effect, I would need to go to this video strip. And in here you're going to see I have an amount slider, I have a static noise type. So each of the different effects are going to have different parameters that you can adjust from inside of the video inspector here. You can also get back to your color wheels really easily by selecting this icon right here which will turn colorful when you select it and you can see right here I have my color board. Also if you want a different color board type you can select this down arrow and you'll see I have the color board, color wheels, color curves, and hue and saturation curves. So that is a quick look at effects in Final Cut Pro. They definitely get much more complex than this but hopefully that gives you a good idea of how you can start using them. Since we're already in the video inspector, I'd also like to take the opportunity to show you how to use the transform tools. So I'm going to go ahead and select my subscribe and we're going to need to make sure that we're in this video reel. And when we're in here, you're going to see that you have a position, rotation, scale, and anchor point, as well as your crop and distort features. In here, you can actually scale up anything you want. You can also adjust its position. Also, if you want a little bit easier way to manage whatever's on the screen, you can come to the bottom left-hand corner of your viewer and select this option. You can also achieve that with Shift T. Once you've done that, it should give you this box and you can see how you can easily move anything around. So if I were to select this background, I can now move it around according to my taste. But something else you can do in the inspector is actually add keyframes. So let's say we want my subscribe text to actually grow in scale. Let's go to the very first frame, then we'll come up to the top right and find our scaling options here. And on the right side, you're gonna see this grayed out diamond. Go ahead and select that and that will add in a keyframe. Then we can move forward to the very end of this clip and we can set the scale of this to something like 150%. So now over the duration of this clip, our scale is going to grow up to 150%. So that is how you can do basic animations in Final Cut Pro. If you want to remove a keyframe, you can actually use these arrow keys to get forward a keyframe or get backward a keyframe. And then you can go ahead and re-click that keyframe button to remove it. Now it should be noted that there's actually a slight bug sometimes with the keyframes, so it doesn't show that there's a keyframe happening right here. It should be golden, but that's just a weird bug that pops up from time to time. One last thing you can do with your video animations is actually right click on whatever object you have the animation on and select show video animation. In this window, you'll actually see these keyframes that you can click and drag around to adjust the timing of your animation. Now, one last thing that's super important in Final Cut Pro is audio. So let's go on back into our media browser here and I'll scroll down to the bottom where I have all of my different audio elements. I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag this song down onto my timeline and you'll see now that I have these audio waveforms. What I can do to increase the size of these if I want to is select this icon and in here we can actually select a version that makes it so my audio waveforms are a bit larger and we could drag up the scale of that. So now I can really see these audio waveforms very easily. If you wanna fade in a piece of music, rather than adding a transition, you could actually just click and drag on this handle right here, and that is going to create this nice fade for you. You can also right click on that and change the fade type if you so desire, but I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it as it is. If there's a different portion of music that you want to actually raise in volume or lower in volume, you can go ahead and push option and then click on this gray line. That is going to create a keyframe. And then I'll go ahead and create another keyframe just like so. And now if I were to click and drag on this portion, you'll see that the audio actually gets louder as it plays on and I could drag this down. So now you get this really severe line of the audio going up. Now here is a quick pro tip. I hate adding in the individual keyframes. So what you can do is come to your tool menu here and we are going to select the range selection, also achieved with R, and we can click 
click and drag over the portion of audio that we want to lower the volume in. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna just click and drag and that will bring down the volume on just that portion that I've selected. But you'll also notice that Final Cut Pro has automatically added in four keyframes for me, saving me four extra clicks. And one last pro tip, if you're having trouble dragging the audio volume up and down, you can actually push Command and that will give you much smaller increments to work with. So we have created our masterpiece. It's time to get this bad boy up on YouTube. So to do that, go ahead and go to the top right hand corner, find this share menu, and then in here you'll see these different options. Now it's gonna look a little bit different for me because I have different presets that I've created, but what we're gonna do is select the export file and you should have that option. Go ahead and jump into the settings portion of your video and under format, leave it as video and audio and then select under video codec H.264. You can also use Apple ProRes 422 if you want the absolute highest quality file, but this is going to be significantly larger in file size. If I were to export this as Apple ProRes 422, you'll see that it'd be almost 850 megabytes, but if I select H.264, it's only 123. So go ahead, select H.264. It's a great codec, I use it for everything. And from there, we can go ahead and select next. Now we can rename this to just be subscribe. And from there, we can go ahead and select save. Final Cut Pro is gonna start exporting this and you can actually see the progress by clicking on this icon right here. And you'll see that it is sharing and it is just about finished. When it's done exporting, it will bring up a pop-up here that says share successful, and you can actually click show to find your exported file here in Finder. So that is the absolute basics of getting started in Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.